Skate Talk Online, the ultimate figure skating resource. I'm Karina Montes. And I'm Joe Johnson. You're watching Disney Channel. Uh, uh, <laughs> God. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Anyways. So we're doing it there, Ice Dancers. We've been skating together for five seasons. This will be our fifth, yeah. Yeah, our fourth season on Team USA. Yes. You have your first Grand Prix event coming up this week. You were chosen by U.S. Figure Skating as a host pick. How are you preparing for the event? Um, kind of, we prepare for any event. Well, just... We always do, yeah. We... Lots of runners. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of exercise. Um, you know, just the usual thing. We're trying to just train for it like we would anything else. Like, we know it's, it's like a huge honor. It's incredibly special, but like, you know, it's if you treat it like it's this thing that's like way beyond anything you've ever done, that's how it's gonna feel. So we're just trying to prepare for it like we would anything else. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific goals for the season and how about long-term? That's a good question. Um... You know, I, I know at the, like the outset of the mm -hmm. season, like in years previous, we've been really, really tuned into judge opinion to, um, kind of where ice dance is at in terms of like how we should be like Just factoring like that into and, um, making our music choices making stylistic choices and it's it's you know it's brought us like a decent amount of success but it's like what we want to do this year really was just like skate to something that we both just absolutely loved like regardless of whether or not like you know we would have it would have been okay if it was like everybody else. It would have been this as long as we really liked it, but we settled on something I think that we both really, really enjoy, and it's mm -hmm. made training this year extremely rewarding and fun. Um, yeah, I think we shifted our goals a little bit. I mean, a huge goal for us was to be on the Grand Prix circuit, um, and that happened this season, which is amazing, um, and we're really excited about it, but I think a lot of our goals are um, – just like focused on um, executing the programs like we do in practice, um, for sure, and like having fun when when we're out at events. Yes. Um, so, not as like points based. I think we've been a little bit like points based in the past. Yeah. And, like, um, we're trying to move into like a space that's about our experience with it. Yeah. With your program music, are you two behind the choices? I know you said that this year you really wanted to do something that you liked, so I'm guessing, yes, this year it was all of your input. So Chris, Christopher Dean, gave us the true music. Well, it, um, it was funny because I had been kind of a pill all <laughs> last year about our free dance music, and she's like, it's fine. I mean, like, you're the only one who hates it, but I was like, I don't like this. And we were always just like, ah, about it to each, towards um, each other about it. And I was just like... Joe's was... a musical person, so he like plays music and stuff, so he's like very opinionated on the music. But like, it's not bad. To, to it's... put it nicely, yeah. No, we're, he's a musical kind of person. Sure. Whereas like, I but, can't tell if the key is but I was, different or I was like a huge brat at the beginning of the season for like three months. Like if I sort of didn't like it, I just like, no, we're not doing it. So it took us a long time to pick music, um, especially then, for the free. Um, but then Chris, Chris was working on a show mm -hmm. in England and then he got back and the first thing he suggested was sweet fruits. Like yeah, the one that he gave us. And I was like, oh, I really like this. Let's do this yeah, one. So it was and sweet. then she was like, oh, I like this too. And I was like, holy crap, we both like a piece of music then. And I was like, all right. We, we literally took no longer than that exact day to just commit yeah. to it and start the process because we both just liked it so much, which was kind of rare for us because yeah. usually like one of us is kind of like, oh, but the team likes it, so we'll do it sort yeah. of thing. And short music was actually fairly easy too. Yeah, um, that was easy. It's from Brita, which is like one of my favorite movies. Yeah, um, it's like the tango where two women are dancing <laughs> together and I was just like... <laughs> Very subversive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <too soon. laughs> So you, you talked about uh, Christopher Dean. Obviously, one of the most famous ice dancers of all time. I think many skaters would be absolutely honored to work with him. Talk a little bit about working with him, what his choreographic process is, how he's maybe different than people you've worked with from the past. <laughs> I think we have start. good things. To, yeah, I know, same. He's just... He's amazing. Like, um, I think my primary difference that I've noticed, like, 
is that most choreographers will kind of give you something and describe it to you. Chris will just go out and fling <laughs> your partner everything. around his body, like yeah. like perfectly too. <laughs> Not just like, oh no, like like she'll just be like, we like doing it perfectly. And then he's like, all right, no, you try. And then, then you can't do it because you're not Chris. And so you're just like, and he's just like, describes it to you. And he's he's really patient, mm -hmm. super humble. Like I'm sure yeah. that everybody has said that about him, but he's yeah, like, like the most ridiculously humble person yeah. of all time. Because if you didn't know who he was, you wouldn't know. Unless, obviously. Except then you see him skate and you're like. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> He's incredible. I mean, he was but, he was still skating his Bolero uh, free dance like up until like four years ago. Exactly the same as he did. He still years. could. Yeah, it's, he probably still could. He still could. Straight Crazy. up. Like he's like, he can do everything that he's always been able to do. Like, I just, I just know like it's incredibly. <laughs> I used to have like a complex <laughs> and then like the other was like one really high level team like they were just coming off of a world medal and they were like doing something and I just remember watching this guy who just gotten a world medal just eating it over and over like, and over words. trying to get this thing that Chris kept on demonstrating perfectly and I'm just like oh it's universal like no <laughs> 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 but no it's it's a huge honor training with him he's the nicest coolest person Very positive um Really grounding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We absolutely love it. I, I still can't believe we get to see him every yeah, day. Yeah, it's the best. It never wears <laughs> off, just so you know. <laughs> it's like. And then yeah. with your rhythm dance, Ben Augusto was behind <laughs> that choreography, and he was basically with Tanith Belbin, the pioneer of where the state of US Ice Dance is today. Mm -hmm. Another great skater. Talk about working with him. <laughs> Ben, again, is, like, so incredible. You'll just, we'll watch his game and we don't understand. Well, um, yeah, that's, the thing is, he's so, he's such a good skater, and I know that sounds, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, holy God, no. Yeah, no, but, like, obvious, no, like, but... he is such an amazing skater, like, he'll just be, like, demonstrating something, and, like, within, like, two pushes, he'll be going, like, 40 miles an hour, and you're just, like, okay, like, no, that makes sense, like, like watching Chris and Chris and Ben get along super well, so it's just mm -hmm. funny watching these two like titans of ice dance just yeah. like <laughs> like kicking around with each great. other, and it's just like ridiculous. But no, yeah. Ben is like he's a puppy, mm -hmm. and he like <laughs> half the time he's like talking to us in like accents and like <laughs> just being goofy. <laughs> yeah. and you're just, like, he's like he's like a stereotypical like barbecue dad, <laughs> like in, both in the, like in humor and in manner. And then he'll go and he'll be like the best, like one of the best male ice dancers who ever lived um, two seconds later. And it's just like, it's the dichotomy is wild, but we love him to death. And it's been fun. This is the first season he's done like choreography for us. And actually Ben and Trina Pratt. Yeah. Trina she Pratt. Another short as well. Mm, um, she was And it's our, our first year working with either of them in terms of choreography. And it's, it's been good. It's kind of fun to have like a little bit of like different styles mixed in, and and they're really complimentary because obviously other, yeah. Ben and Chris have like done a lot of shows yeah. together, and Ben and Chris's styles are very complimentary. And Trina was trained by Chris for a long time, mm -hmm. so it's not like there's like this huge disconnect between the style of movement. Like they 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 complement each other mm -hmm. well. While most teams are training out of Detroit or Montreal, how <laughs> is it to train in Colorado Springs, and what is your daily schedule? Um, so we, like, we've gotten this question a lot because we, yeah, we're the only team, yeah. or one of the only teams by ourselves, yes. um, and we've grown to kind of love it. Um, we definitely it have teams passing in and out, so it's not like we're isolated all the time. Um, we have a new senior team training with us this season, mm -hmm. first season together, so, um, we're not totally by ourselves, but, um... We get to play our music over and over and as over and over, over again. <laughs> it is so peaceful. We don't have to wait in line. <laughs> like, like, we don't have to watch out for like right of play very often. No, like, and it's like if you ask about our schedule, it's uh every morning we get there at seven, and then uh, we skate from seven thirty to about ten thirty straight yeah. through. Then uh, I, a fifteen minute to half hour break, depending on how much we're gassed from that first three yeah. hours, and then um, the rest of the time until usually until about an hour about and fifteen noon. minutes until noon. Um. So it's about four hours on ice every day. Um, and then uh, so Crane is a full time student, so oh, I go to school Monday through Thursday after that, um, and then depending on the day, I either do a workout in the gym or I teach group fitness. So mm -hmm. I'll teach like one of my group fitness classes 
Um, Which would just kill me if I had to do cycling every day. Oh, no, I love my cycling class. It's like one of the best things in the That's wild. Yeah, I, mean... I love it. But yeah, so then I'll go teach group fitness and then by that point I'm like ready for bed. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Recover, eat snacks <laughs> like throughout that. But yeah, no, I was going to say we always have like a protein bar or like 10 in our backpacks. And yeah. Just, cause we, we, like, well, I'll, I'll usually go straight to the gym afterwards Yeah. because, um, my, my schedule is I coach on ice and then I teach gyrotonic, which is a modality similar to Pilates in that it's just like a lengthening core strengthening flexibility. And uh, I will teach that in late afternoon and I'll teach on ice after I work out usually. So I'll go straight from, uh, air force to, uh, there's a little, there's a gym right by world arena called NSCA and I go there. And then literally across the street. So as soon as it's time, I just go across the street. I teach for about two hours, two hours, two and a half. And then I'll go, I have a little studio in downtown Colorado Springs. And then I'll teach there for an hour or two. And then I am ready for bed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like work out all day, recovery period. Work out all day. day. You have like an hour for whatever <laughs> Netflix show in my case, not she has homework. Yeah. Homework. I have Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm on, I'm on season two of Gossip Girl right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be probably for the next month. I, can't, I can never binge a show, but that's where I'm at. <laughs> so that is our schedule. We, we work out a lot. And then you, so on the weekends, is there anything skating related or is it just you time? Well, I mean, for your career nights, you homework and studying, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's summertime. <laughs> this semester's been rough. I'm just laughing because it's been particularly rough this semester, and sometimes you'll just walk in, and she'll be like, I was up to, like, 11.45 doing this paper, and I just, like, fell asleep. I'm trying to be, like, very time management oriented, <laughs> and so that doesn't happen all the time. No, no, just the, this semester, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's been a lot of homework. But uh, weekends, we don't go on ice at all. I um, coach sometimes for two or three hours. Yeah, but, but we don't do any, most. like, on-ice training. No. Um, I'll tend to do, like, a yoga class or something on a Saturday, but um, otherwise we use it mostly to recover. Yeah, and I usually will do the, the thing that I teach for an hour, hour and a half yeah. on either Saturday or Sunday. Usually Sunday, actually, because I find that it helps my, keep my body awake for the week. Mm -hmm. So usually Saturdays I'll take completely off of, like, any major exercise, and yeah. then I'll do my workout on Sundays. So mm -hmm. This is, like, sort of pre-activation. And then repeat <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, but other than that yeah weekends we, we do have two days off of uh, on ice training, training. like nice. some some people do like the, the six day schedule but mm -hmm. uh i think like with every like with how much volume we have through the week like yeah we're, we're, it, we're it's happy good with to let our bodies rest <laughs> yeah. a little bit <laughs> understandable <laughs> one thing i've noticed with your skating and i think a lot of people notice is you're really athletic in terms of you're always coming up with different lifts. Your spins are always in unique shapes. Do you come up with these ideas? Do you do you play around and, and kind of fall into these ideas? Or is it your team that comes up with them? Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, a lot of it's Chris. A lot, yeah. Well, like, he has, like, his wealth of tricks from and i say tricks very lightly because like it's insane what he can do but like he's just like he's accumulated so much of this like wealth of dance knowledge that's yeah. like, He'll like pull up videos and we're like Where is this every going? time he pulls up a video it's from a different professional program that he did and i'm like how do you, how do you have 75 different a how do you remember yeah <laughs> b how did you do so much yeah. but like so he'll just he'll usually like give us something that was like sometimes too though it's not always something he's done sometimes mm -hmm. it's like there'll be like this like viral dance video on yeah, facebook at the something. time and he's like you guys wait till you get a load of this and when we watch it we're like chris this doesn't make sense this doesn't <laughs> work will, on the ice yeah. he's like but it's going yeah, to yeah. and then <laughs> it was just like spend a week or so or yeah. a month or three but, making it work but like yeah. sometimes we have yeah i mean we've definitely i think especially like this season started yeah. to kind of come up with things able to contribute, some. contribute a little bit more on our end um in terms of like ideas or like adapting things to like our bodies and our work together um or even just figuring out a way that we've done something three years ago that would make this current move make more sense yeah like so. it's just like it, it 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 makes sense why a lot of these these like these quinlorains like 
the the people who've been together for like 15 plus years have such an easy time of skating with each other because once you start to get like that movement vocabulary to together like, yeah. we're like oh, okay yeah this is getting easier <laughs> as we go because it's like it just starts to make sense yeah. like physically and you guys can you, like your timing gets similar it's yeah. it becomes a lot easier but yeah we we've contributed some but a, a lot of it's Chris a lot of it's Ben a lot of it's yeah. Trina like we have a we have a good staff in terms Team of effort. mostly because they all just like especially Trina's been on this, like, Britney Spears kick. Like, Every day she comes in, she's like, I was watching a Britney Spears video. <laughs> she's just like, have you seen the what? Her, her, like, live performance from the VMAs with the snake? No, but Trina's hilarious. And, like, no, they're, they're always just drawing inspiration from things they've done, from things other people are doing, like, and then Patty is, like, the problem solver of it <laughs> Yes, all. she is. Thank God for Patty. <laughs> because she'll just be like, yeah, that isn't physically possible. You're not doing that. <laughs> or, she'll, or she'll be like, okay, like, we'll figure out how to work do it. Work on it. Yeah. Try it a little more. Yeah. <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> yeah, no, Patty's, she's Patty's like a godsend. She's the problem solver she is, of the team. She's also the person who, like, raids down, like, Trina's like, what if you, like, picked her up, like, by the ears? <laughs> and, and Patty's like, you can't, um... <laughs> do that <laughs> patty's that voice and yeah. we we appreciate her and love her very much <laughs> all right karina last week you posted a very powerful and brave video on instagram tell us a little bit about that and what made you feel that now was the right time for that decision um yeah i did that <laughs> <laughs> So honestly, the timing, well, there's a few things that went into it, but a big thing is that my girlfriend, Alina, is coming to Skate America, which I'm very excited about, um, and I have some, like, extended family that's going to be there that I had not told, <laughs> um, and I was like, wow, I better tell people before she shows up to an event, and I have to explain it there, so that was a big part of it. <laughs> Um, but I mean, another part was, I think that like, it is kind of this like platform that we haven't had before. And like, I kind of want to be doing it as like holy myself and not, um, like hiding. And, and it's just been a long time that I've, I've been holding it in and it, it felt like the time. So. And how has the feedback been within the skating community? Everybody's been really sweet and supportive, and it's been amazing. Um, really, like, more than I could have hoped for in terms of, like, kindness um, shown to me. So I really appreciated that because um, it was, like, it was stressful for me. He knows. He had to deal with my, like, anxiety over it. <laughs> <laughs> she, would, she came in the morning, like, after she did it, and it was funny, because I was, like, you know, I was, like, trying to, like, send her, like, encouraging texts, and I before she's like, do I do this? Do I do this? I was like, yeah, Karina, do it. I'm, like, I'm, like, your shoulder devil, just, <laughs> like, whispering in her ear, and then, like, the next morning, I was like, it's, like, taking a weight vest off, and she's just, like, it's... she comes in the next day, she's like, it's not, like, taking a weight vest off. She was, like, she was, like, filled with dread for, like, three days. It was, like, so, I'd like to clarify something. Everybody was telling me, like, you'll feel so much better. <laughs> which is not like, a universal experience. It's like, no, I, I do feel good about doing it, but it, like, the first week <laughs> was really hard. Because <laughs> it was like people were individually finding out and finding out. And so it's like the experience of coming out to one person, but, like, over and over and over and over again. And so it's like, what's their reaction going to be? Like, what's the next person's reaction going to be? But it was good, and I'm glad I did it. And yeah. And also, I've been telling him forever, like, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to do it at Pride, or, like, I'm going to do yeah. it on Valentine's Day. It's been, like, so long that I keep saying, so I'm like, I mean, yeah, follow there's, through. There's like, a, there's, like, a point, too, just, like, obviously, like, one thing, too, and I'm definitely not trying to, like, take away from the experiences of other gay men in the sport. Yeah. Just, like, I, I think that coming out as a guy is, uh, in figure skating in particular is just a little different. Mm -hmm. I know that there aren't an abundance of queer women who have spoken up about it in figure skating and that's totally their prerogative. It's really, really a personal ex like mm -hmm. timing. And she definitely experienced that just watching her figure <laughs> out when the right time was, was really interesting. Cause you know, it was kind of weird for me to, I didn't even want to talk about it. And it's not that like taboo in this sport yeah. to talk about being gay as a guy. And I was just, and watching her go through that 
and really knowing that there isn't going, going to be a time where it feels like the right time. Yeah, I mean, it's different for everybody. I know. Right. Like, some people are like, oh, I know it's time. But, like, for me, it was kind of, I had to force myself. Yeah, no, but I was, <laughs> I was super proud of her because it had been a long time coming. Um, and it was just, like, watching everybody, like, like just knowing that she's not going to have to post photos with a girlfriend with, like, a vague caption, <laughs> but, like, are they, are they just really close? My best like, friend. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of funny because I, I did post <laughs> quite a bit oh yeah i even posted a photo of them and i was like hey karina do you want me to kind of like hint at it in the, in the caption and she's just like <laughs> she's like yeah no yeah yeah do it just do it and i like did it and everyone's like everyone's just like look at those friends they are such, They're good, such good best friends <laughs> look how close look at them hugging i'm like i have to spell this out but i'm not going i'm not, not i have to but like one has to yeah. spell it out when it comes to women <laughs> It's a different experience. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but no, I was I was really really happy for her. I am really happy for her. I'm super excited going into next week, knowing that she just gets to be herself and not have to really worry about that, mm-hmm. especially around her family, like doing and her things she loves. Been yeah, and her family's been super. <laughs> I'm happy too that it's a, especially like I haven't seen anything yet, and I obviously haven't gone looking, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen anybody really question it. Everybody's just been that I've seen yeah. has been super accepting yeah. of it. And yeah, like, it's been really cool. and people in the skating community, like Delilah Sappenfield, some like various coaches have just been like, oh, you oh, know, her I video made me cry. Good. Like, you, you, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so happy that's been the response because that's what it should be mm-hmm. when somebody decides that they want to be themselves out in the open. And it's cool. And I'm happy. But I'm just like, well, like we're in this sport. Like, <laughs> I don't know what is really stopping, like body image, for example. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to talk all the same. Because, like, our sport, like, does have a problem um, in terms of especially the women, but, like, also the guys um, with a lot of girls, like, struggling with their body image. Um, And it's hard because you don't want to talk about it and then get labeled as, like, Tessa, I just saw an interview where she said um, she got called lazy, um, but they thought she looked big at one point, um, and they, like, associated that with her work ethic. And so you just, like, as a girl, it's hard to, like, talk about that because you don't want to acquire this like label or um you don't want to give it any credence but at the same time that's out there yeah and I'm finally like at a point where I'm just like this is my body I like obviously like work so hard I'm constantly working out like (laughs) if you think that it doesn't look right for skating like that's your problem (laughs) and that's a big thing uh, to Tamisha, I mean, she's landing triple axles, and then you have somebody <laughs> saying that she's out of shape and needs to lose 10 pounds. It's insane. It's because I, I know when I was a kid, I listened to every single thing everybody said, and you know, I, oh, sure. I took oh, yeah, hard, yeah. So. And I know Tuk Tamisha is a woman, and she kind of fought back a little bit on Instagram, which, which was amazing. <laughs> well, and when mm-hmm. you're younger, like, I know for me, it was like, I will do anything to be successful in this. So if somebody tells me, like, to be successful, I need to be 10 pounds lighter, like, I would be willing to do it. I mean, obviously, I've reached a point where, like, sacrificing your health is not worth anything, not nope. in the whole world. But um, when you're young in this sport and you don't know better, you're going to do what people tell you. Yep. You've you. got a dream and you have a, yeah. a very experienced... And, and that is what makes, like, that personality type is what gives you success because you got to be, like, a little bit crazy and a little bit obsessive to spend all your time in an ice rink and um, work that hard. It's hard to know where to draw the line yeah, sometimes, and, but that is young, where you should draw the line is your health. skaters don't know better, and they, you can't expect them to. So that's on, like, everybody. That's on the journalists, and that's on coaches to really be. No, it's on the parents. It's on every, yeah. It's on literally everybody in the sport to try and change that rhetoric. Mm-hmm. Even, especially, not even, especially in private. Like, because, like, it's yeah. like, you can't, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, like, oh, I think you should be healthy as long as you look good in a dress. It's like, you have to know that well, and like, it's about execution. I think one thing that's that's really going to help maybe shift these ideas are, you know, uh, Gracie Gold took time off because of her mental health. Gabrielle Daleman posted the exact same thing and said she completely stopped skating right now because mm-hmm. she needs to deal with her mental health. Well, that's like really brave, I think, to bring up. Like, I can't imagine um, the pressure they felt like disclosing that. So. Or the criticism they're opening themselves up to mm-hmm. by doing so. It's scary. It's like... Mm-hmm. Props to both of those girls. Mm-hmm. And I'm like wishing Gracie on the best in her comeback. She's been, I met her for the first time at Champs Camp and 
She was so sweet. <laughs> yeah, she was, she was super cute. Yeah. I don't know, but, like, I think, too, it's just, I think when you see the Gabbies and the, and the Gracies who are coming forward about their mental health, I hope that's sending a message to everybody who's raising a figure skater. And when I say everybody, I'm talking parents, coaches, other oh, skaters, community. skaters who are yeah. older and looking mm-hmm. at, to be, like, letting these kids know that their mental health is also a priority. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I, I know it wasn't, like, mental mental toughness is something to be aspired to, but it's not something that you do by eliminating mental health taking and pretending it doesn't yourself. exist. It's taking care yeah. of yourself, making sure that you're seeing someone if you're having issues, mm-hmm. making sure that you feel comfortable to speak up about something, mm-hmm. about body image, about anything. Because if you don't, you feel like talking about that equates to mental weakness. Well, there's a stigma, and I think the more people talk about it, though, the hopefully the less stigma will affect people. And I hope, hope that everybody's realizing how important it is. Yeah. You know, I think they're incredibly strong mm-hmm. for what they're doing, and I think that they're going to be all the better for it's it. It's really important. So, and I hope, good conversation yeah. you're having in the sport, I think. Yeah. Joe, favorite video game? <laughs> <laughs> um, or games. Okay, so- I'm on a huge, like, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild kick right now, but I'm, I'm kind of, like, all about nostalgia Pokemon Crystal. It's probably my favorite <laughs> video game of all time, so that's my favorite. Okay. Uh, both of you, favorite skating element? I, okay, this surprises everybody. I love Twizzles. That's, like, no <laughs> dancer's favorite, but I love them. <laughs> she does. She, she loves Twizzles. Um... I am a fan of lifts, personally, just because I feel, like, super in control of that particular element. I think it makes a lot of sense, like, the way chains are up and down. I like the way it feels swinging somebody around. It's fun. I don't know. That was also, they added choreo step sequence this year, and that was Oh, okay, that was yeah, this particular yeah. year, I would say my, my personal favorite, yeah. just for this year, is a choreo step, because it's just voguing. It's like a dance break. It's a blast. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> favorite music? Um, so I really like a lot of, like, alternative rock, um, I'm really into, like, Death Cab for Cutie I, right now, like, they just released an album, but <laughs> I'm still kind of, like, a moody teen in that way, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <she is. laughs> Some days you'll come in, it's just, like, like, nice, like, 2007 nice days. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, that is the vibe that day um my favorite is i would say generally it's like carly ray jepson and the surrounding genres yeah. but like i've been on kind of um a fleet foxes kick yeah. which is weird yeah. but like it's kind of like i've been kind of like into folk rock lately it's which autumn is, like, here hosier hosier how do you say his name his, Hosier. his ep is so good yeah I've i know super good listen stuff. to listen to <laughs> nina cried power on available in itunes and spotify <laughs> Okay, RuPaul. Um, <laughs> favorite food? Um, ice cream, for sure. Ice cream. She's also lactose intolerant. <laughs> Everything I love in this world. I have. She just found out she says a gluten. I'm too. allergic to wheat, so I've had major asthma attacks for like three years, and I was trying everything in the world, and finally at Champs Camp. The nutritionist is like, have you tried not eating wheat? Like, if you have grass allergies, sometimes that helps. So I gave up wheat, and my asthma has gotten a thousand times better, but I'm dying because I like bread a lot, mac and cheese, pasta. I, so I'm struggling with that, but it's okay. I'll be okay. <laughs> Popcorn. Popcorn. <laughs> that is it. Okay. That, is the long, that is the short and the long answer. I love popcorn. Favorite TV show? Okay, this is, makes me sound like a bourbon mom. I really love This Is Us. <laughs> I've never seen it. It's so good. We only don't watch it together and like, we feel like suburban parents, but it's so good. Yeah, I've heard it's good. It's really good. Joe is Gossip Girl. <laughs> Actually, you know, you know what? Like, Gossip Girl's fun. Wouldn't say it's my favorite. I am watching it mostly just because. I have two people breathing down my neck to be mm-hmm. like, you like, you have to finish Gossip Girl. One of them's a student, one of them's the boyfriend. They're both just like, they're like, you'll grow to love Chuck. I was like, Chuck sucks. I do not like Chuck, but apparently I'm going to. I couldn't Still get don't believe it. Though. Yeah, I know. 
<laughs> no, my favorite TV show would probably be, it's like, okay, this is like, like early 2000s sci-fi, which like is again kind of out of left field. But like, <laughs> like there was this show called Firefly. It only had one season. It was so it's good. It's a cult classic. I know yeah. that. Yeah, it is amazing. Cult. It is like, I, I'll go back and watch it. And it's still like, I still like cry over that. They didn't get it renewed for a second <laughs> season because it's so good. <laughs> But that's my favorite. Maybe it'll show. come back in 20 years like everything that's else. That's the spirit. When you were growing up, did you have role models in skating, skaters that you wanted to be like? So, okay. so many. Ryan Bradley. Oh, I, I, I love Ryan Bradley. Yeah, me too. I was obsessed with him. <laughs> I remember great. when I, like, he talked to me one time when we got back from Autumn Classic and we, like, won a medal in there and it was our first international and he, like, came up to us and was like, congrats. You know who I am? <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I mean, Michelle Kwan. I feel like my generation, yeah, well, she yeah. was like the hero to all of us, for sure. My dad got me to sign a newspaper from her. I yeah, so... I had her like poster in my room. Um, she was such. A, she is such an icon. She like hangs out with Kobe Calais and like Maldives <laughs> or something, like, wherever they go. Um, and then for me, like in dance, I love Anna and Luca. They were always, like, heroes to me, um, especially when I was getting into dance. And then Tess and Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they're, they're so right. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> and they've been at it for forever. So, like, <laughs> growing up, we watched them, and now it's like they're still, still killing it. <laughs> Even <laughs> now, it's, it's ridiculous. Joe, are you still a big fan of Yuri on Ice and JJ? <laughs> absolutely i like okay yeah i've like i i've, I've ta- like who was i talking to they're just like anime is half your personality <laughs> <laughs> i can't remember but like somebody said that and i was just like okay i guess might as well own it yeah no i have like like funimation was super funny after that because like that's like the production company and after i did this little thing <laughs> in the kissing cry, uh, they sent me a bunch of um animes as a thank you on like Blu-ray discs, and so I've been I've been super into Yuri on Ice. Uh, just started Cowboy Bebop. That's great so far. Mm-hmm. Like I'm I'm into a couple, so I just like the the genre in general, <laughs> which is <laughs> time to own it. <laughs> yeah, uh, favorite book. Favorite book. Okay, so I have a lot, but I'm really into creative nonfiction right now. Um, so one of my favorites is The Obvious Set of Loneliness by Marina Keegan. Um, really good. Makes me cry all the time. Um, but I also am reading, and I'm not done with it, but I'm reading Empathy Exams by Leslie Jameson right now. And her writing is phenomenal. So good. Um, and then another just like tangent book that changed my life a lot is The New Jim Crow, um, which is about injustice in the criminal justice system. Um, and I think I want to be a public defender. So that like had a big impact on me in terms of like things I want to do with my life. Joe. Yes. Favorite place to stand. You know Anywhere? why I'm asking you this, right? No. Favorite place to stand. Wait. Uh, who filled out your ISU bio? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Uh, so in his in his uh, hobbies, it says video games, brunch, standing, sitting, and thrifting. <laughs> Favorite place to stand would be anywhere where there's a surface about hip level that I can throw my leg up on so I can stretch. And I mean anywhere, like I'll be at a Dairy Queen and I'll just forget where I am and I'll do that and I'll be like, this is not the place. But I do that sometimes. Favorite place to sit would probably be... Um, like my mattress okay. before I lay down on it. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite place. We always struggle with this. I always see my I know. It's like, what do you want? I know. A lot of people make funny jokes about it, but I, I saw that and I'm like, I'm just <laughs> I'm glad that you saw the stand. And here we both like independently put brunch without Yeah, which was sad other, because which... that is probably a hobby at this point because it's one of the only other things we do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Karina Monta. And I'm Joe Johnson. Um, and make sure you watch us at Skate America this week. Yeah, in a couple days. I thought you were going to say, like, you're watching Disney Channel again. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry. Force of habit. <laughs>